Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Petra's Happy Place. Today is sep September. No, it's already October uh, 6, 2021. And uh, I'm here today to share a devotional out of Philippians. So let's start with a word of prayer and then we'll get right into it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love and your kindness and your goodness and your mercy. Lord, thank you for always being constant. Thank you for being the only constant that we have in our lives. With so much upheaval going on all around us, things going wrong, we know that we can always count on you to be right there with us, never changing, never failing, always filled with forgiveness and love and care and compassion. Lord, we love you very much, and I ask that you would bless my tongue, and my heart, and my mind this morning, so that when I speak your words, a life could be touched, possibly changed, that you could bring healing to others through your word, through me. Lord, make me a vessel. And I ask that those in the hearing of the sound of my voice would be touched, encouraged, feel loved and cared for by you. I ask all these things in your precious son's name. Amen. Okay, beloved, let's get right into it. So we are still in Philippians. And um, I wanted to just quickly mention that I realized that I had started this devotional off by going through um, um, a book, a devotional by Stephanie Woolsey, the Jane Austen devotional. And I realized that some of you are still working on that. And I, that makes my heart glad. And, and I am so happy that uh, I was able to um, maybe open up a little window or a door to... Um, Jane Austen, the world of Jane Austen and her writings and her, her, um, her words, and that, um, and that some of you are actually reading her novels, and uh, and are being, I don't know, in a way touched by by that. I, I'm just very very thankful that I had the opportunity to, to open, um, the doors for you. And, um, I don't know, I might go back to that at some point. I ha I found another little Jane Austen prayer book that we might go over at some point, but, um, I just felt the Lord drawing me towards Philippians to share some of the, the truths that he has in store for us in here, instead of using a um, a set devotional, if you will. Okay, so we might go back to, to Jane Austen at some point, but for now, let's just go through the book of Philippians and see what uh, the Lord has for us here. Okay, so um, let's go back to verse 9. We talked about verse 9 yesterday about his love, about the love for one another that we were having. And Paul is writing and says, and I, and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes from Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Okay, so... Yesterday, I talked about those two words, so that, and, and we talked about those words in reference to your love abounding more and more. And today, there's that word, those two words again, so that you may approve. Well, what are we talking about? So that uh, you may approve the things that are excellent. We, the words right before that were real knowledge and discernment, real knowledge and discernment. So what in the world does that mean? What is real knowledge and what is discernment? Well, this is not a Webster's dictionary, but discernment is being able to tell the difference, 
to tell the difference between one thing and another. So spiritual, oh, excuse me, uh, knowledge, are we talking about book knowledge? What are we talking about here? Um, are we are we supposed to get all of the, the theology books out there and, and start digging into them to understand what they mean so we can prove what's excellent? No, beloved, we don't need to do that. All we need is the scriptures, okay? So let's go to um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. All right, let's read here. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfast and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. That was all one sentence, so I had to read the whole thing. We don't want to take things out of context, right? So here we see in verse 9, it says that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in spiritual wisdom and understanding. So when we go back to Philippians chapter 9, and it says, um, Paul is uh, chapter 9, no verse 9 um, in chapter 1 when Paul says uh, real knowledge and all discernment I believe this is my belief and if you have a differing opinion or if you have something that you'd like to share with me that is contrary please please let me know because I don't want to to speak anything that is out of, of context or that is incorrect okay uh, please call me out on it okay um, but I believe what, what Paul is talking about in the real knowledge and discernment is that there were a lot, and in, in, at this time, there were a lot of um, false teachers and false preachers that were going around saying all kinds of things that were not true, that were twisted, that were, that were um, adding to or taking away from what the gospel really was. I'm trying to put this stuff away so I can set my Bible down <laughs> so I can look up and not look down. Um, so there were all of these people um, that were um, trying to, in order to get glory and honor for themselves and not bring honor and glory to God, they were trying to draw the people's attention to themselves by twisting and, and um, um, making something that wasn't true in order to gain uh, people, to turn them away from God, okay? And so I believe Paul was trying to address this and saying, look, when you love one another, when you love one another and you are, are looking to God and God alone for that, for that filling of that love, you need to ask him for what is your will, God? What is your will? What is it that you want me to do? Okay. Now at the time, at, at the time of the writing of this um, uh, of the Bible of Philippians and Colossians, um, they had uh, large portions of the Old Testament that they were referring to as Jews. They had that to reference. They didn't have an entire Bible, okay? They had to look towards these letters that Paul and Timothy and um, who else? Uh, James and John and Luke and, you know, all of the, the letters that these men wrote to others, okay? They were looking towards to those for answers. They were, 
they were counting on spiritual guidance from men of God that were put in, in positions of teachers in their little smaller groups, okay, in their church, in their local churches. So um, let's go back to Colossians here where it says, um, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. This is a gift, beloved. This is a, this is a gift. And this is a gift that's given to each person who comes to Jesus. When you come to Jesus, you have this indwelling of the Holy Spirit that is not in every person in the whole wide world. It's a gift. It's a special gift and that seals you to the time that you come to know, well, excuse me, until you, uh, Jesus comes again and he takes you to heaven, okay? So um, when, when Paul is writing that he wants us to have discernment and knowledge, that is, what is God's will? What does God want? Not what does man want? Not what does man want you to do, but what does God want? And how to how do you discern right from wrong? How do you d discern whether or not what that person is saying is leading you to Christ or away from Christ? How do you know? You have to ask for that discernment and Jesus will give it to you. The Holy Spirit will give it to you. Um, now, why, why did Paul find that that's so important to have that discernment? Be because in verse 10, it says, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ. He does, he he was praying, Paul was praying that those, those people in the, in the church of Philippi, uh, Philippi they're in, in, yeah, in this, in the uh, city of Philippi, that they would not be drawn away by all these fancy, this fancy talk and, you know, these highfalutin people who come in and, and have something sparkly and, and, and try to draw them away from what is pure. And what is godly? Um, the things that are, he said, the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless. He wants excellence, not as in, I have to do things perfectly. No, that's not what he's saying here. He said, God's way is excellent. It's excellent. We don't, uh, he did not want Christians to be drawn away from that which was excellent. He, he wanted people to be uh, aware that they can ask for help from God and that that discernment could be there. Now, we today have the Bible. We have scriptures, don't we, beloved? We have it. So let me ask you, how can we today find out whether or not what somebody is saying is excellent. How can we discern whether or not a teacher, a preacher, um, a friend, a neighbor, a relative is saying something godly or whether they are trying to draw us away from what is pure? Well, we ask for discernment, first of all, and then we pick up the scripture and we find out, we dig in, we dig in and we find out, ask God and say, Lord, this particular teaching has just got me, mm, you know, the pastor said something from the pulpit that just didn't sit right, Lord. Is it, is it, is that, I don't know why it doesn't sit right. Is it because I need to change something or is there something wrong with what was said? Well, go to the scripture and find out. Because, beloved, there is nothing in here that contradicts itself. Okay? There is nothing. Everything points to Jesus. Everything points to Jesus. Everything from the first book, 
first verse of the Bible to all the way to the end, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, everything is about Jesus and helping us to see that Jesus is the way. That's it. It's very, it's very simple. So if somebody is saying something that draws us away from that, we, we need to question it. We need to, we need to be able to discern what is right. So, wow, that was a mouthful. Let me read um, Philippians 1, 9 and 10 and 11, 9 through 11. Let me read it one more time and let's see if it, it uh, kind of brings everything together for us, okay? And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes from Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I like that. I like that little wrap up, don't you? No. So now tomorrow, uh, what we'll do is we'll go a little bit more into verse 11. So um, I am excited about that one because I found some notes that I wanted to share with you. So I hope that, that you found that helpful, beloved. Um, please let me know in the comment section if um, you found that helpful. And um Again, if I've said something that it doesn't quite click with you, please leave me a comment. If you don't feel like, if you don't feel comfortable leaving me a comment down below, please email me at patrishappyplace.com and let me know any concerns that you might have, okay? I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.